Well, yesterday, OpenAI launched Atlas, which is their new browser. So where you might have been using Chrome or Safari before, uh, Atlas is a new version of that. And that is what you can see on the screen. And so you might be asking, why is it that I need an AI-powered browser? Well, I'm only a few hours into getting my hands on uh, Atlas, uh, but let me just show you a few things that uh, uh, you know I'm finding a bit useful and uh, starting to come up with some different use cases. So first off, it's built on Chromium, which is the open source version of Chrome. So if you've used Chrome, it'll be fairly familiar. It looks like a browser. It is a browser. Um, uh, now, what's different is that here we have a little toggle on the left and we can get access to everything that is in our chat GPT here. And we can just start having conversations just as uh, we might want. Um, but it is also not just a chat GPT interface. Uh, if I type in Koala, I'm able to go straight to uh, the website just as I would if, if I was in, uh, in uh, Chrome. Now, when I'm on a website, I can actually start to engage with it. So up here, we've got an Ask ChatGPT button, and that brings on this sidebar here, and I can say, what do these guys do? And ChatGPT is able to look at the specific web page that it is on and start analyzing and assessing. Now, this can be fantastic if you're trying to summarize uh, a long document, a long report, uh, find out what is going on in a specific company. And so here we go. So this is ChatGPT interacting on a specific um, uh, page. Now, um, not everything is uh, just the internet. Uh, it's not just a, a website. Uh, we might be on our LinkedIn profile. And so let me go to my LinkedIn profile here. And I might be wanting to interact with both the combination of ChatGPT uh, looking at this page but also what it knows about me from my ChatGPT memories that are in my account. So I might be saying here, uh, hey, based on what you know about uh, me and Koala, can you suggest how I should improve my LinkedIn? in profile page. And so because this is in my ChatGPT account, it knows all of the conversations that I've had in the past. It knows about Koala and it's able to start having a look at uh, exactly how I should be updating this. Well, instead of my headline being a sort of list of facts, maybe it should be a bit more value led about what it is uh, that we're doing. So you can really start to bring a web page to life. And instead of it being a case of copying and pasting from one tab to another into your ChatGPT, uh, ChatGPT has actually got access to those uh, pages. Now, that kind of reading is quite useful. But if you think about some of the things that, um, uh, uh, that uh, you use in your browser, well, what about documents? Um, so uh, we use Google Docs, uh, Google Drive uh, here at Koala. And so we have a lot of things in our browser. And so here, for example, I've got a, a document which goes into a GPT that helps members of the team to work with me. And I can just highlight any specific section here. And then I get a little chat GPT button up here. And I click on that. And I can start to engage with this. Um, hey, can we add some more detail here to expand on how uh, my team will use this GPT? And so ChatGPT, because it's embedded into the browser, has got access to the actual document. It can then suggest something. Uh, and then I go, OK, yeah, let's update that. And it's changing the actual document uh, in here. So that's quite useful. But it can then go further on and actually start to take action on your, um, uh, on your documents, on your browser. So I'm going to go here, ask ChatGPT. And I'm going to go into agent mode. Now, agent mode gives ChatGPT the ability to take over your screen and start clicking. So I'm going to say agent mode. 
can you create a new document that is a copy of this one, but instead of being specifically for me, acts as a uh, acts as a template that anyone could use. And so what this is going to be able to do is now going into agent mode and ChatGPT has got access to my browser. So it's understanding uh, what I've asked it to do. I've asked it to go and create a new document. Um, while you're in agent mode, uh, you can see it's given this nice sort of sprinkles over the top, but, but you can take control or stop it from, from doing anything. Um, now, some of the examples that OpenAI was showing is uh, you know, asking ChatGPT to go and uh, load up your shopping basket um, uh, for your weekly shop or going and booking a holiday. ChatGPT is able to now click around and use your browser in exactly the same way that, uh, that you are. So here you can see it's created a new document for me using uh, Google Docs. It's now going to replicate uh, what was in that document. And we'll have to see how this goes. Uh, I'm still very much experimenting with what is possible uh, with these. So I'm heading into providing you with a demo, not knowing exactly where we're going to end up. Finalizing the doc. Adding some spacing for formatting. I'll finish the description of the work with your name assistant. Finalizing it. So it's given it a new name in Google Docs. All right, I think that's nearly, okay, that's done. There we go. So here is a work with your name document template, uh, GPT name, maybe a few little errors there. GPT name, work with your name, a description of blah, 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 blah. So those are just some of the examples of how you can start to use ChatGPT in this new Atlas browser. So firstly, it's just always there. No need to go to a tab. You can access your chat GPT. And secondly, when you're on a page, you can start to take actions and use the agent to take over the control of your browser. So have fun and look forward to hearing how you get on with your new Atlas. Uh, just to be clear, it is available only on Mac OS for now. Um, so if you're on Windows, you're going to have to wait. And they are working on an iOS and an Android version as well.